everyone. I hope you're all well. Today is Monday the 17th of June and we're going to see the Foo Fighters tonight. Yay! We are so looking forward to it. Jack is a massive Foo Fighters fan. I've got into them because I've constantly heard them through Jack playing them all the time and I really enjoy the music as well but Jack is the major fan. We were meant to be going to see them last year or the year before we were going to go down to Manchester but unfortunately um, Taylor Hawkins the drummer passed away so the tour was cancelled and this is them coming back to Scotland now and we are so looking forward to it. it the only downside is it's at Hampden Park. Now Hampden is our national football stadium, it's where Scotland plays football. I've been once about 20 odd years ago when I was first together with Jack and I can't remember much about it but Jack's been a couple of times and hates it because there's no parking and it's a nightmare to get in and out of and all the rest of it which is a bit of a bummer. The other downside is we couldn't get any disabled access tickets so we got standing tickets <laughs> and I'm thinking well it's on a pitch it's on a football pitch surely I'm going to get access to it no bother and um, yeah we'll just we'll stand at the back so that I don't get trampled but it doesn't matter Jack wouldn't want to be right down at the front we're too old for that rubbish anyway um, so yeah we're happy to just be at the back and hear it and be able to see it on the big screens and things so hopefully they'll let me in. That's my worry, but they don't let me in because I'm not standing. It's worth saying here that I did phone Ticketmaster at the time of ordering the tickets and they said that it would all be fine if I was in the wheelchair on the pitch. But we'll see. Um, because it's at Hamden, we were like, well, we'll just get a hotel and we'll get a hotel in Glasgow and just get a taxi there and back, save the hassle of parking. And I was like, yeah, great idea. So Jack had had a look and sent me a couple of links. And the hotels were like 70, 80 pounds, definitely affordable. And we were like, yeah, okay, that would be good. And then I realised that it was yesterday's date that was in the check-in date instead of today's. So I changed the check-in date and I went on all the same comparison sites. Every hotel was at least double the price for tonight than it was for last night. How ridiculous is that? Obviously because the concert's on, there's demand for hotels, they're getting away with it. They wanted £190 for a travel lodge room. A travel lodge room? No way. Even if we could afford it, I wouldn't pay them it. I honestly would not pay them it. I would rather spend £200 getting a taxi to the place and back from home than give them a blooming uh, £200 for a travel lodge. Ridiculous. So... As it turns out, we are just going to have to drive. But then my mum said yesterday, how about I give you money and you can go for dinner before it and that'll make it feel like a proper night out. Because if we were in the hotel, it would feel like a big deal. Whereas if we just go to the concert and back, it's not got the, the same sort of buzz about it. So Granny Annie has very kindly given us money to go out for dinner before it. We're not fussed about seeing the support act or anything like that because Jack's had to listen to them on Spotify and really wasn't impressed. So we don't want to go, the, the gate's open at five o'clock, we don't want to go open uh, go there for then because we'll have a couple of hours to wait before the support act comes on and then have to listen to that. That's fine if you're young and wanting to get a really good view right down the front, that sort of thing. We're not fussed about that. So we're going to leave here probably about four o'clock. We're just going to go to Brayhead, I think, for something to eat because there's loads of places to choose from there instead of going all the way into the city centre and then battling the traffic and things on the way back. So we're going to do that and we're really looking forward to it. I looked at the forecast this morning for Hamden and there is a less than 10% chance of rain. No, there is a 10% chance of rain tonight. So I'm hoping that it stays off because it's out in the open. We will see. I don't know what I'm going to wear. I've got no idea what I'm going to wear because... It's outside, but it's supposed to be 17 degrees, so it's not going to be cold. We'll wait and see. I will see nearer the time. I will cross that bridge when I come to it. When it comes to food, I don't know what I'm going to do because I am still following the carnivore diet. A couple of you asked about that when I put up yesterday's video. Yes, I am 90% of the time 
Um, when we were at Glam's Castle for the Fern Nations, I wasn't on it then, I was just eating what I wanted because the cup final was on, the, the Celtic Rangers cup final was on and I wanted to have a drink with that, so I just ate what I wanted. And then last Sunday, Jack and I had a rare day together, so we decided to go for lunch and I thought, well, if I'm going for lunch, I'll just eat what I want. So tonight, I don't know, I want to stay on my carnivore diet because I feel best when I'm on that. And when you go out to restaurants, you generally can. You'll find that, you know, I'll be able to get a steak or a burger or chicken, that sort of thing, and just not have any of the trimmings. But the thing that bothers me is, and I, I, I don't mean to sound like a stingy Scot, I know I've got a reputation for being stingy and miserly, but I don't want to pay them for a full meal if I'm only going to eat half of it. And I really don't think they're going to give me a discount because I'm only having steak and not having chips and veg. So I don't know. I'll wait and see. I'm going to stay carnivore through the day anyway, and then that way I can decide when we go out for dinner what I'm going to have. Um, but yeah, I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying. I would say I'm probably more ketovore than carnivore at the moment. Food-wise, I'm all carnivore because it's just, it's just meat that I'm eating. Although I am having quite a bit of dairy. I'm having cream and either sour cream or creme fraiche and cheese. But a lot of carnivores do that anyway, so that's fine. Where I'm kind of straying into the ketovore is I am getting right into having my coffees again, especially iced coffee, but I can't have that without sweetener. And sweetener is not carnivore, so I've been using the sugar-free coffee syrups. So the sweetener is sucralose, which is one that's a lot better than the aspartame that's in fizzy juice. Um, but it is still sweetener and that isn't carnivore. And talking about fizzy juice, at night when I'm watching the telly, I do like to have a can of zero sugar fizzy juice. I know I did so well being off it and just having plain water, but I got a bit sick of that. So I've been having one, one can of that with some cream in it. It sounds disgusting, but it's great. If it's cold enough, it tastes like an ice cream drink that's melted. Um, so I've been having that as a treat as well. So that's where I go ketovore rather than carnivore. Ketovore is a cross between keto and carnivore. I'm still not eating fruit or veg, anything like that. Anyway, that is where I'm at with my diet. That is where we're at for today. And I don't want this video to be too long. So I'm going to leave for just now. I'm going to get on with the bits that I need to do in the house which is nothing exciting, housework, that sort of thing. And I will come back to you once we are ready to go out. I'll see you then. We're so excited. Right, that is 10 to 4 and we're organised for going out. I'm all changed. I've even put some makeup on. Not a lot. Um, I'll just show you what I'm wearing. I decided to go with the shirt that I wore to the St Patrick's Night thing. And some skinny sort of faded black jeans and my black shoes. And I've blinged it up a bit with some earrings and a necklace and a bangle. So that's me, all ready to go. I'm looking forward to it. got no idea where we're going to go for dinner yet. We know we're going to Brayhead and there's quite a few options there. So we'll, we'll decide when we get there. And I still don't know whether I'm going to stay carnivore or just eat what I want. I'll wait and see when I get to the restaurant and smell things and see the menu. But yeah, looking forward to it. We've had to print the tickets out, which is unusual. Usually you just show them on your phone, but it did say you need to print them. So I've printed them. I've got the cash that Granny Annie's gave us for dinner. And I think that's us. I think that's us all organised. I've just got the little over-the-shoulder bag that I got for the St. Patrick's Night thing as well. And that way I'm not worried about anybody stealing anything. And yeah, that's us. Yay. It feels nice to get dressed up and go for a wee night out. So I will catch up with you when we are out and about. Nah, we can go to Wotherspoons at any time. Coffee and churros. 
Well, it's quarter past five, that's us arrived at Brayhead. We've came to the excite section of it, which is just across the road from the main shopping centre, because there's more choice here of food. Also has a massive slide in it, which obviously I can't climb up. <laughs> a climb zone, climbing wall and things as well. It's got mini golf. This is where we brought group at Christmas one time, wasn't it? Ooh! Little dessert shop. Oh, it's shocking. <laughs> So there's Monterey Jacks, Nando's, Frankie and Benny's. Do you want to go upstairs and see? There's a buffet up there. Frankie and Benny's it is. The one near us has been shut for a long time. Ooh. Excellent. I like that. Garfield. My dilemma do I go for the hot cookie too or the Frankie's loaded waffle? No, I'm not gonna start running the air cookie. Well, that's the same. Aye, it's still the same sort of style, but although it's not. Ah, you want the Italian stuff? Yeah, they've painted the decor. It's a delicious meal, wasn't it? Yep. It was actually better than TGI Fridays was the last time we were here. And uh, staff were brilliant, she was really nice. And the diet went out the window. <laughs> of course it did. But yeah, that's us now. It's about 25 to 7, so we are going to head to Hamden and go see the food fighters. Yay! Well, Jack was not kidding when he was talking about the parking. It is ridiculous. Mind you, the motorway was like a car park as well. <laughs> the actual um, the proper exits of the motorway for Hamden going both ways was queued for miles so Jack just carried on and then took a different exit and came through the town but the, I'm not kidding there's just there's people parked look that's on the pavement I'm having to get onto the road because that car's on the pavement that's how bad it is we only managed to get a space because it's a disabled space so I said to Jack, the, pr the pro of having a disabled wife is we found the parking space, the con is you need to push me all the way to Hamden now <laughs> but it's mobbed, there's just hundreds of people walking towards the stadium How far away do you reckon it is from here Jack? Half a mile About half a mile, poor Jack I'm not the lightest, especially after having cheesy garlic bread and a big waffle <laughs> Anyway, we will catch up with you when we get there There's all the, the merch, the queue for it, I know, and that's Hamden. What's the queue? Oh, is it just Portaloos? There's a lot of buses they've got, isn't it? Very busy. Burgers! So that is the queue for the Portaloos. <laughs> They're not bad actually. Aye, but 35 for a t-shirt's not bad. 45 for a long sleeve t-shirt, it's not too bad. £10 for a pin badge. £30 for... Oh, that's LPs. 
vinyls. To get through a vinyl. <laughs> Aye, that's nice. They are quite nice. Oh, there's the horses. Never mind the clowns, I'll stand and see. Stand? I'll sit and see the horses. There's the official merchandise. Got you for it. Look at the horses, oh, I love them. Are they separating us? This is scary. It gets really claustrophobic in crowds. Being down low, people can't see you. It's not nice. Oh, I need a barbecue. Well, that's a bit better. Ooh, I didn't like that at all. Oh, look at that. Okay, so we're heading back the way we came. <laughs> we got as far as the turnstiles and realised it was actual turnstiles. There was no way I was getting through them. Uh, we spoke to security and she said that I'm not even allowed on the pitch because I'm a trip hazard. Um, so she directed us to her boss who has told us to go round to the under the tunnel bit and to ask for somebody to speak to about accessible platform. Speak to James. We have to speak to James apparently and he will help us so hopefully he will help us. <laughs> and we're in. Woohoo! Can't be saying this is where the team buses come in when it's uh, football. And the players get out down here. Ooh, cool. Wow. Here we are. Stage. past 11, that's us heading out to the car. Oh, <laughs> I don't want an ice cream, but I do want chocolate. I'm really in the mood for chocolate and a drink. See what happens when I have carbs. <laughs> Good morning everyone, it's now Wednesday. <laughs> yes, we've missed a day. I'll explain why in a minute, but I just wanted to come on to talk a bit about the concert. Um, it was so good. When we left you, we were on our way down through the tunnel so that we could get directly to the pitch. And it was all good. We found a spot right at the back. There was like a barrier between the seating area and then the pitch. So we, we were there so that Jack could sort of have perch on the barrier and that we were out of people's way. And where we were, I could still see one of the screens, uh, even although we were a fair bit away from the stage. And... <laughs> really annoying right people just don't well I think I was going to say they don't think I think they just don't care there was a couple of people sort of came and went to stand and saw me sitting there so sort of moved over a bit which is what I would do but no this one guy came saw me sitting there and just stood and stood uh, turned and stood right in front of me anyway and I'm like thank you and then I thought well I shouldn't really be here so uh, I'm not going to say anything and then there was another guy beside us who was in a wheelchair with his partner or friend, whatever. And we were uh, just watching the concert, maybe about 20 minutes in, really enjoying it. Jack's favourite song came on, we were like, yes! And one of the stewards was talking to the guy in the wheelchair next to me and I thought, uh oh, what's happening? Because the first steward that we spoke to, the first security person said, wheelchairs aren't allowed on the pitch and I was like well we spoke to them at Ticketmaster and they said it would be fine so this steward then came and spoke to me and said Hamden's got a policy there's no wheelchairs allowed on the pitch and I was getting ready to kick off I thought you're not kicking us out now and um, she said so we've found a better spot for you that's accessible and it's going to be safer for you and everybody else and I was like perfect lead the way so she took us back up the tunnel we came down and then into a lift which meant jack was missing his favorite song ironically i don't think they could have done it if they tried the song is called walk 
very ironic since she was moving the people in the wheelchair. And just as we were going up the tunnel, he's singing, learning to walk again. And I'm like, no, we're not learning to walk, that's the issue. <laughs> it was very ironic. But anyway, they took us up in the lift and took us out onto this platform bit. Now, it was just a small platform. There was enough space for me and the other guy in the wheelchair sort of side by side and Jack and his partner were like sort of beside us and there were seats as well so it meant Jack wasn't having to stand anymore and I think Jack said that that platform was used for TV cameras so it was sort of jutting out there was nobody in front of us it was right up in the gods so we were looking down we could see the whole crowd we could see the stage we could see the screen it was much better it really was the only issue was there was like a big barrier going round it about eye level to me and then under it there was like cables obviously for safety so to see properly I had to either stretch up to look over the top of the barrier or sort of lean down so that I was looking in between the barrier and the wire but other than that it was brilliant it was much better and we thoroughly enjoyed the concert they were so good really good um yeah he he was a, a good performer he did speak to the crowd a lot but um we couldn't really understand what he was saying they say we talk fast but he was talking very fast the words that we did identify were sweary words but that's rock and roll for you <laughs> and it doesn't bother us we you know that's that's us we we like that so yeah really really good concert played some brilliant music got his daughter up on stage to sing a song with him as well. I will put clips in once I've finished talking to you, um, but obviously any music that's on, I'll need to put other music on top of it because of copyright reasons. So don't think that he was singing whatever music it is that I'm playing because that definitely would not be the same type of music. Um, but yeah, it was really, really good. We had a brilliant time and the meal had been lovely as well but the only thing is when i eat carbs now i'm starving i'm never hungry when i'm eating a uh, carnivore which i'm straight back on it i was straight back on it yesterday so as soon as we left i said to jack we need to get a bit of chocolate and a drink somewhere because we didn't bother getting anything while we were in the concert jack was too busy watching the concert i wasn't going to say to them by the way go and miss this song as well so that we can get a drink and I wasn't really that desperate for it, and I didn't want to need the toilet either. Although, where we got moved to, the bar was much quieter, and there were proper disabled toilets, so it wouldn't really have been an issue. Um, so yeah, on the way back, what we ended up doing, Jack had deliberately, when we were looking for somewhere to park, it went further away from the motorway, so that we didn't have to go back on the motorway and fight through all the traffic. So we basically, he drove through a couple of little towns, which was fine. And uh, we went to the 24-hour Asda govan and got a bit of chocolate and a drink. And then we went home. But we never got home till 1 o'clock in the morning. And then by the time we got to bed, getting everything sorted and things, it was about quarter past 1. And then I had to get Brooke up at quarter past 6 to get her showered and get organised for school and stuff. So as soon as she was away to school, I went back to bed for another couple of hours and slept, which was wonderful. Um, so yeah, I was exhausted yesterday. But I knew I would be, and I don't mind that because it was worth it. It really was. So yesterday was a write-off. I did nothing. We were in bed until back at living, I think, and then got up and just sat and caught up on some TV in the living room. So that was basically yesterday in a nutshell. So that is why I am finishing the video just now. But yeah, it was a really good time. Thank you for coming along on the journey with us. I will put some clips in for you after this. <clears throat> Excuse me. My throat's still hoarse after singing and shouting. And uh, yeah, so if you've enjoyed it, please do hit the thumbs up button. Talk to me in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already, please. And I will see you in our next one. Stay tuned for the clips. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Just a quick warning. The following clips might contain flashing images and swearing. So if you're offended, then please don't watch.
Well done, Randy. Randy C. Jaffe on the fucking keyboard, right there. Hey, everybody's fucking face. How you doing? It's funny, the other night we played the show, and uh, I came out here to this part. This is when it turns into like the fucking kind of the stadium show, where you start walking out on a little thing like this, and I compared it to uh, Taylor Swift's camera store. <laughs> so tonight, we haven't done this one, but this is a long fucking time. But I'll tell you, the reason why we're doing this song, oh, you know that show? Hold on, did you know it? I don't know if you know this, I wrote this fucking song backstage at fucking T in the Park for like fucking 20 years ago. Just fucking playing the stadium, huh? 